Who can say for certain? Maybe you're still here. I feel you all around me. Your memory so clear. Our precious Travis was born Memorial Day weekend in red, white, and blue. He was my third child and his father John's firstborn son. We had a second son named Tyler, and they were inseparable. At age five, Travis developed a love of sports. When he was 10, he was thrilled to join the Navy SEALs cadet program with his buddies. He was born to serve, and the officers would tell me he had leadership potential because he was a disciplined, respectful young man. When Travis was 15, his cousin Raymond died suddenly. He told his Auntie Char he would get a job and buy Raymond's 62 Ford Galaxy, which she would save for him. When he turned 16, he got a job and bought his dream car. It was one of his most proud and joyful moments. For his 16th birthday, his father and I agreed we would let him get a tattoo of a feather, signifying his Lakota Sioux heritage, which he wore proudly. He said his grandmother told him it meant firstborn son. At age 18, Travis changed his mind from being a Navy SEAL and pre-enlisted in the Marines. Ten days after graduating from high school, he went to Camp Pendleton for basic training. In September, the family went down for boot camp graduation, where we spent two days with him. He was proud to be a U.S. Marine. What an awesome feeling to witness and be a part of such a memorable moment in our son's life. Before Travis deployed for Iraq, his father, brother Tyler, and I flew down to see him for three wonderful days together as a family. When we took Travis back to the base, he and I sat in the back seat where he held my hand the whole way, feeling the love soaring through our hands straight to our hearts. It was a very special, precious moment in time that I'll forever cherish. We dropped him off, giving him all our love, hugs, and kisses. As we drove away, I wanted to jump out of that car and hold him one more time because I didn't know when I would see him again. Travis flew to Kuwait on February 16th for a few weeks training and then into Aramadi, Iraq. I talked to Travis only two times during his service overseas. With our last conversation in early morning of March 17th, he apologized for waking me up. And I said, are you crazy? I have been so anxious to hear from you. He said he was fine, being very careful, witnessing horrible events, but enjoying giving candy to kids. And I was not to worry because he was okay. Little did I know that would be the last time I would ever talk to my precious angel. Two weeks later, I was standing in my apartment carport with two of my neighbors when I saw three Marines coming towards me. They didn't have to say a word because I knew they were there to give me horrific news of my son's death. I started screaming uncontrollably, not my Travis, oh God, not my Travis. I can't explain the devastation that fell over my family and me that day. Travis was in Iraq for only three weeks when he was killed in a hostile ambush with nine other Marine brothers and one Navy medic. On April 14th, Travis's body finally landed on American soil. When we met him, my son was draped in red, white, and blue again. He was a hero who gave the ultimate sacrifice as a U.S. Marine. The day we laid him to rest was when he was awarded the Purple Heart. At Travis's services, we had a Lakota Sioux medicine man ask us if we knew what Travis's tattooed feather meant. We answered firstborn son. He said no. It means fallen warrior. Oh God, I still get chills and shivers when I speak of it. Travis had lived his dream, which was to serve his country. God bless his courage, sacrifice, and love. He is now our guardian angel until our circle links together again. 
We love and miss you, our fallen warrior. Life goes on like a carousel. Life goes on, a never-ending tale of love reborn from the cradle worn. A web is spun for every mother's son. Life goes on like a spinning wheel.